Hello everybody and welcome to podcast time with Decentralized Dave and Curtis. Hello Curtis. Hi Dave. Uh, Curtis has been on fire recently having an accurate short-term call I think on Twitter he's like hit the very local bottom for now like like $100 off or something. Actually I've never made a price prediction live in my life. Okay. And I hit it perfectly so I was total <laughs> it was totally luck. Yeah, so June 13th is when I said that. And if anyone wants to believe me, you can go back in my thread yeah. to June 13th. But yeah. Um, so I said uh, maximum pain means we go lower. And uh, just for fun, I'll call. I just pulled that out of my ass. I didn't actually <laughs> calculate it. And uh, what did they hit? 17.5 or something. Yeah. Yeah, but this is not the only reason why you are on fire because you also. <laughs> month ago you you took some of your bitcoin off the table at 29k so you are literally already in profits from that yeah um, yeah so i chopped back well and done. forth a little bit well I, i traded back and forth and made sure i didn't make as much as i should have <laughs> we're gonna start with the update very fast because we are restructuring the podcast now we are shorter 30 minutes at max and we are weekly so yeah yeah, lots of to looking forward to. So let's begin with a short update. Would you like to start about Bitcoin? So yeah, we hit the 17.5 um, at the very bottom there. I think that was yesterday, two days ago, yesterday um, was that. Yeah. So and we're sort of, um, it looks like that's a very short term mm -hmm. bottom. Probably we've gone back up to about 20. Mm -hmm. um, so about a $2,000 or $2,500 bounce. Um, mm -hmm. Nobody knows, uh, but you know we're still in a downtrend. But that was that might be a short-term bottom. The stock market topped everything out, and you had liquidations, and then cascading into new liquidations, cascading into new liquidations, and then we had Luna and Celsius that cascaded new liquidations, and it's all it's a house of cards, right? Hold on, hold on, uh, hold on a second. Uh, I yeah. don't think Celsius got liquidated. Fair enough. Um, I guess. Per, it, it definitely put fear in the market. Um, it just fear, and, yeah, but not yet. Yeah. No, you're right. The other thing is um, a lot of Bitcoin was collateralized um, uh, yeah. for other coins. And my understanding is because it's the most valuable asset, it's getting sold off or getting called back, right? So if I'm lending coins, I'm going to call back my Bitcoin first. That might be it as well. Um, the thing now is probably miners are selling. Um, I've heard, I read this morning, oh yes, and that's generally yeah, so, very bad news. For that, I'll try to keep this short, but um, you know, in the last bull run, the mining companies are now fairly heavily capitalized and their shareholders were saying, hold your coins and hold your coins and hold your coins and hold your coins on the way up because you're getting more and more leverage on the value as the price rises. So the miners are holding lots of coins and the bull market was accelerated in this cycle because of the game theory of the miners were really hodling a lot. The problem now is it'll probably accelerate the downside. In other words, if they start going bankrupt, they're holding a lot of coins, they'll start selling these coins. Yeah. So we may have another dump coming. Um, some of the miners are going to go out of business. We we, we might go lower, but I, I'm actually even more confident on this market, the Bitcoin market, as I've ever been, I think. Um, but sure, there's some, there's some deleveraging happening and mm -hmm. um, there could be more pain coming soon. It's a long weekend, hey, and, and today's also a national holiday in the US, so it's another day of holiday. It looks like um, the recession is already here. Um, mm. There's a lot of negative uh, pressure on real estate. Obviously, equities have sold off, all the assets have sold off, bonds are, are down. Um, so I think the Fed has already sort of achieved their goal, which was to pop asset prices they're trying to do what's called demand destruction, sort of a fancy phrase, but demand destruction is a way to try and mitigate inflation. You basically mm -hmm. um, really hurt people in their pocketbooks. So the wealth effect on the negative side, basically when people feel poor, they'll stop spending money and that's a way to tackle inflation. It's a very stupid way to tackle inflation, but it's one of the only tools that the Fed has. Kind of like getting your uh, cavity fixed with a shotgun. <laughs> I thought that was great. So I've got a sore tooth, so I'm going to use a shotgun to fix it. Um, the analogy meaning they're going to blow the head off the world economy trying to fix inflation, and uh, it's going to be a disaster. Um, 
Oh. Uh, we'll talk. We'll talk about that maybe next week because we're short on time. Couple of things that I want to point out. First of all, is the volume. The volume was higher the last week. It was pretty respectable volume, although the volume of Corona is still higher and the volume of last May's uh, 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 liquidation drop in uh, 2021. Uh, that is still higher as well. I think we are going to have to defeat that volume if we want to find a real bottom. That's one thing. Another thing is that I found a video of mine from September 2021 where I was talking about what's going to be happening once the market revisits 20k area. I'm going to edit that video. There are circumstances where the support that is meant uh, is 100 or 1% safe and is meant to work, that is not going to work. And so that's just what I'm telling you right now about 20K, because when we go back there, when we come back there, there is going to be an unprecedented amount of thought. Okay. And we don't know what else is going to be happening. It might be even not only fat, it might be a real problem. I do not recommend anybody in the world to go all in leveraged on 20k. I do not even when we go there the first time, I absolutely do not recommend you go there. Everybody else is going to be crying on the floor and just all the influencers will be proven wrong that they've been telling you all this 100,000 bullshit here. This was very aggressive, unbelievably aggressive, just breakdown. It was zero reaction here on this support, pretty strong. And most of all, zero reaction, absolutely zero, even minus reaction at here, it, this strong support. So, you know, if it can ever happen again, I would point my finger on 20K that that's where it can happen. And just, you know why? Because everybody expects this to be the bottom. Everybody, even all of those influencers that were hesitating whether really 100k here, they told you that okay, 20k is the bottom. Everybody expects that to be the bottom and even to be recovered from very quickly. So that's why I'm pointing my finger that if it can ever happen that we go down abruptly without any reaction, it is going to be on 20k. I feel that some of the points in that video actually are applying on our situations that we have today. Um, uh, now for the, you mentioned liquidations, you mentioned Gliger leverage. Uh, so yeah, I've prepared this chart for you so we can see that the open interest on Bitfinex has plummeted, has completely, has, has gone down 50%. Although it is very debatable how much Bitfinex matters. Bitfinex is not the old days, right? The, the open interest on Bitfinex today is a mere few percent from the all open interest that is out there today. It's a mere small percent. So I don't think it matters much. Uh, as for the whole open interest of the whole market comparing to the market cap ratio, which is my favorite over averaging indicator, I was able to see volatility coming many times based on this. It's still yeah. very high. I think we are continue. We will continue being very volatile, Curtis. So that's the total amount of people either long or short. Yes. It's leverage, yes. The and slash, yeah. I call it over leveraging because it's divided by the market cap. So right. if the market cap go lower, then it takes less leverage to be over leveraged. If okay. That makes true. Sense. Okay. Right. 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 And we are like like all time high in that. So I think we will continue being very over leveraged, although the past week there was predominantly short leverage coming. So, OK, that can be saving rate, although I don't think that's enough for a short squeeze at the moment. Have you seen the amount of buy the dip on Twitter again? You know, I, I was like looking that, but... at that like this is yeah. not cool. Like again, like fudge. I was like, oh my gosh. Well, I buying the dip is fine. Just don't do it with leverage. Uh, the same people that are buying the dip right now, the same people, I had a quarrel with them last December. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, same yeah. people were, this is the bottom, let's buy the dip. The same yeah, people sure. were in January. Now yeah. it's the bounce, the same, let's buy the dip. The same people were in, in March, let's buy yeah. the dip. This is the bottom. The, uh, well, eventually April they'll well. get it right, David. <laughs> but, okay, okay, fair enough. But because of this, uh, because of this attitude, Everybody was just always buying the dip. It's just being defensive. Like if people have been defensive sooner, 
I don't think we would have been going this this much down, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, it's just human nature. But it's, ironically, uh, no. But what'll happen is they won't buy the dip now, and it will, it'll bounce off the bottom, right? Like, uh, that, so I totally get what you're saying, and and you made some really great calls, and I, I you, you you know you're right. No, I, I get your point. Buy the dip should not be just a mindless mantra like uh, a cult. Yeah, you know? yeah. Every um, time it goes down a little bit. Yeah. So that was the leverage. So bottom line from this leverage, looking at this leverage, guys, uh, I don't think all the liquidations that needs to happen, they happened. The hedge funds, they know that these entities, they just need more selling and short pressure. And the hedge funds know that they're going to get certain money if they short yeah. uh, because well, of these liquidations. Can so, I talk about that for a second? Yeah, because yeah. it's interesting. So, um, what I heard is that the, the funny thing is that people were asking uh, people like like Tether and Luna and Celsius saying you have to be transparent and show us your coins, right? And show us your risk. But the funny thing is, if hedge funds have that information, they can drive and destroy the company. <laughs> yeah. Right? It, maybe so that's, if, that's, if, that's why they want it, it, yeah. If a hedge fund knows that Celsius, where all Celsius coins and, uh -huh. and leverages and their buys, and their, if they know they've got a trillion of Tron Makes or sense. something, they exactly. can, so, so it's so funny because for, exactly. and that's what happened with Luna. Did you hear that? Basically, Do Kwan made some deal with a hedge fund. Well, that was the rumor. And they basically used those coins to short them. So that was the leverage. So uh, now the volume, the leverage, um, all in all, uh, also with my video from the last year, I, I'm i not sure how much of a local bottom we are at the moment. I mean, obviously now, the like when you look at the total kind of market cap, when you look at weekly, uh, like we are way over stretched down. And this is like normally in this level that I'm drawing right now, there would be like so much liquidity. Like normally we would not just slide down without reaction. Like this is abnormal. So, okay, yes, we are overstretched, we are oversold, but it doesn't mean there are situations where the market just continues being oversold just because everybody thinks like, okay, it can't go any lower. And th right. that's, that's not yet the capitulation when everybody thinks, okay, this, we can't go any lower. And there have been so many bottom calls over the past week. So many, everybody's so convinced that 20K is the bottom. So, mm, yeah. I am I'm very skeptical, although the timing, I, of course, I won't, I will not try to time it again. That's one way how to get wrecked. Right. Yeah. So again, I, I didn't really have a presentation on this. I just <laughs> wanted to continue the theme from our last, uh, for people that have listened and, and watched our last uh, video. Um, I'm really stuck on this theme. Um, and it's, I'm sorry, it's contrary to some of what your predictions are, but it's very pro Bitcoin, but I'm getting quite excited about this analysis I'm doing here. Um, in other words, the view that um, inflation uh, will be permanent and keep rising or be strong. If it mm -hmm. is, you're going to see a real damage to bonds, to real estate valuations, and equities. to equities. Maybe less so equities because equities, what they can do is raise prices to fight inflation. Mm -hmm. um, so um, equities have uh, some volume control on fighting inflation, whereas a bond is a fixed instrument um, and sure. real estate. Um, I mean, real estate, they can raise rents, but only so much. Mm -hmm. But anyways, the thesis is that uh, inflation is here to stay. It's going to damage the brand and reputation of bonds and some of these other global assets and that it will spill over, the money will spill over into Bitcoin, maybe some to gold, but uh, Bitcoin at the current price, Bitcoin is now dropped. You can see it's at 0 0.6 billion, a trillion mm -hmm. in there. It's mm -hmm. now down to 400, so it's even better, it's <laughs> 0 0.4. Yeah. Um, of course, equities have fallen too since this chart was created, but um, basically that, um, like some people are saying the Fed is gonna pivot and not raise rates, but inflation will keep running right so the the fed rate changes are different than the weather inflation is continuing and my argument is that the fed cannot raise rates because they'll crash the world economy they're going to keep the money printing going um mm -hmm. all they're trying to do now is scare people to crash the markets to try and hold back inflation but they're not going to be able to do it mm -hmm. because um, they would default and therefore you're going to see inflation and people are going to say, we're not interested in bonds anymore. 
becomes like the the Japanese ten year bond pays zero point two percent, and the Japanese yen has fallen seventeen percent against the U.S. dollar this year. So, <laughs> in six months, you lose a thousand times the value <laughs> of the asset. So basically, I'm going to stay with this thesis and keep coming back to it, at least until I'm wrong. Hopefully, I'm not wrong, but that we're going to see a rebalancing of these pools of cash: real estate, bonds, equities, art and collectibles, mm -hmm. gold, silver. I cash. agree. We will. I agree. And that Bitcoin will get a small percentage, and alts for you alt lovers will ride on that, and you'll have another bull run in 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 crypto. Let's call it all the other way around. You're going to see three to six trillion dollars, maybe more, and and a call option on fiat failing, and uh, that was the original case. Bitcoin Bitcoin might go down to ten thousand and have a bear market mm -hmm. for a couple of years, yeah. but eventually yes. we're going to have that recover. So I see a possible dipping, but you're going to have a a bull run like you've never seen before. Curtis has beautifully underlined this uh, this uh, co this correlation. Uh, between the stocks and the crypto and that in the future we might have maybe even inverse correlation when uh, uh, when the, the traditional markets might perhaps stagnate or even go down and the crypto is going to go up. That's the decoupling of the crypto from the traditional markets. We've talked about it a couple of times. It's one of these things that I also am very convinced that this is going to happen. I don't know the timing, of course. So far, crypto is very correlated to, to the stocks. And based on that, we can uh, we can also try to read if we have hit the bottom. And the first thing you want to try to do something like this, you have to be looking at the chart that you know that nobody else is looking at. And there is one chart that I, I know nobody else is looking at because it's my own and I've never seen anybody <laughs> else use it. It's it's the BLX slash SPX chart. And I have prepared a new for you today. So we're going to have a look at that. So from this chart, guys, we've almost hit my blue line. This my blue line here is one first my proposition where we could have a local bottom. Because a lot of people would say, oh, that's the Bitcoin price, right? No, no, no. This is not the Bitcoin price. This is uh, Bitcoin divided by the stocks. So when you see a rise in this chart, it means Bitcoin is outperforming the stocks. When you see decline in this chart, you see that the stocks are outperforming Bitcoin. And because Bitcoin is more volatile, it's usually that when the stocks are dumping, Bitcoin is dumping harder. When the stocks are going up, the Bitcoin is going up harder. Okay, so this was this line here. This was this was the line I had here for like a year, guys. If you've seen me reading from this chart, this line has always been there. 4.72. And guess okay. what? We were 4.84. I'm get, I'm just thinking of some of your viewers that may not be so may not understand how this chart could help them make money or understand what's going to happen in the future, right? Like if you're saying that Bitcoin and stocks are correlated, okay, mm -hmm. we agree, and that the correlation is falling. Uh, no, the correlation is, is continues being strong at the moment. Okay, but because when it hits 4.72, what does that mean? That's a local bottom or could be local bottom. For Bitcoin or for, for Bitcoin, the correlation? Yes, okay. for, so for why Bitcoin, the, why even, the even the fiat, fiat price in Bitcoin even. Okay. There would be a reason why Bitcoin would 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 rally before stocks do. Let's say we're talking to your viewers and we're saying, okay, guys, that's great, but can you help us between now and the end of this year? In a bulk scenario where the Fed pulls back, stocks will perform, right? But I'm, we're trying to see, will Bitcoin already have rallied before the Fed rate gets reversed and then stocks run up? That's kind of what I'm interested in. Um, uh, you know, let's say we hit a recession in the summer and the Fed gets more dovish and they pivot. Okay, well, then stocks are going to start rallying. But will Bitcoin and crypto have rallied before that, do you think? No, or... no. First, we will no. see okay. the stocks go up. No, no, okay. no. Okay. First, we will see that move and only then it will likely also okay. uh, bring some spark. But right now, what we are trying to determine, if was this the local bottom that we've had? Okay. And this chart, at first glance, I thought that no, but now when I'm looking at this, there might be some tolerance from hitting this line and maybe, just maybe, we are actually within the freaking tolerance. Why does the, um, sorry to ask so many questions, but it's interesting. So why does the lack of correlation indicate a bottom? 
this chart is in I think all about the correlation and the correlation today is very strong and has always been strong I disagree with Katie Wood who says that it wasn't I think she's very wrong in that I wrote her email about it as well when it's strong the price is down I don't I'm not quite following uh, the, the correlation when it's strong then when the uh, stocks dump Bitcoin dumps harder and uh, after the uh, stocks okay. go up okay. once the stocks started going up that's the Bitcoin is gonna catch up it will start uh, going up sooner or later. I got you. Okay, I didn't understand yep. that. Okay, okay, that makes sense. And uh, however, guys, uh, from this chart, there is you see this blue area. So now let's see that my blue line was hit, and this is some kind of local bottom. We don't know for how long. Who knows? Maybe for a few days, maybe for a few weeks, or few, for a few months. I don't know. But the true buy zone for crypto or for Bitcoin, should I say, on this chart is this blue line. So there is going to be lower levels uh, on this chart as well. So uh, comparing to the stocks, Bitcoin is going to get even cheaper. That's my conclusion as well. Okay. For all of you. But and stocks could still rally and Bitcoin go up less and this chart would still fall. That's true. That's, that's true. But it's not going to be happening for long. Yes. If stocks start the rally, Bitcoin will most likely lag behind for a bit of time. And then you will see this chart going a little bit down. Okay. Right, Maybe right, even here. Right, right. But that's the, then I can, I'm very likely that the, the Bitcoin will try to catch up and then it's going to, you know, do some upwards movement. But right. it will, it can be lagging for a little bit. Yes. And uh, last but not least, the stocks. The stocks, I have generally two targets. The first was bearish. I've already had this target here for uh, like half year or even more. Yeah. Uh, this blue line, and it hasn't been hit by far. It's still quite away. And then I even have ultra bearish line. So, but the, let's not talk about that one today. Right. So uh, I guess that would be all from from me uh, for the moment. Uh, let's just maybe argue a bit about Bitcoin and Bitcoin dominance of the market. I think we've made history last week because I don't think there has ever been a, a, an instance where Bitcoin would be dumping so much and that there wouldn't be panic on the market in a, in a way that the altcoins wouldn't sell off even harder. The last right, week, right. Bitcoin was sold harder mm. than altcoins. I think we've made history here. And the question is, is this the beginning of the decoupling that I keep blabbering about? The decoupling between Bitcoin and the other alts? De decoupling meaning that the Bitcoin dominance is going to collapse to 10%. <laughs> so is this the beginning of that? I don't know. This might be a very slow beginning of that. We might have still some upside movements. My targets are these two areas, by the way, and we are very far from them. But right. who knows? Maybe I'm wrong in these areas. Maybe the decoupling really has already started. So right. What do you have to say? I guess, do you know why that happened? So I did see that some alts uh, rallied a little bit mm -hmm. or fell less than Bitcoin, right? Um, there could be reasons for that behind the scenes. I don't know. I'm not an expert on it, but it could have been that there was uh, collateralized Bitcoin that was sold off or miners that sold off. Yeah. Um, not because they w didn't, again, for liquidation reasons, not for because they don't like the coin. Does that make sense? So it does make sense, but it's yeah. it can start like this. It can start yeah. that people will just sell off because of liquidation reasons. And then the whole view of Bitcoin is going to change. But the miners are going to change. The miners are going to buy it back. So if they were the sellers that drove down this dominance, um, Maybe that would be a con a counter to what you're saying here, but who knows? Maybe you need some more data here. Let's see. Some of them will quit. Yeah, miners. Yeah, well, they'll, yeah, but some, some of them will come back. But yeah, yeah. Okay. And also, my argument is, I, I mean, against the Bitcoin is that this is the new emerging market. This is the new industry. Industry always improves on the prototype. Bitcoin is the prototype. Right. Also, I've read the white paper. Well, okay, like. Everybody should read it, but I finally read it like thoroughly, like slowly, and I was really like trying to go deep. And it's clear to me that it was, it tried to be the global money system, uh, not an asset. Like the white paper says very clearly that this is, you know, this is meant to be peer to peer yeah. Uh, currency. Yeah. And in my opinion, Bitcoin's already failed in that quest. It's not gonna be 
global money. It cannot be global money. I think there's a strong argument that it can't be. I, I would agree with that. At least not in the first, the next five years or so, because governments won't let that happen. And okay, it's evolved into asset, but like we can say about anything that is an asset, like the, the bottle that I have in my hand now, it can be some kind of an asset. Like this is, I think this is just people being religious and just out of religiousness. Like this is a failed attempt for a global cryptocurrency. And I just said, okay, so it's an asset. Like, I think it doesn't make sense to me. I think it's a tremendously, uh, a, a tremendously successful experiment and it started a new whole industry i am very positive about it and the brand will always stay bitcoin brand will always be around but other right. than that no i disagree with yeah, all so this, i guess this, this, this. i think some of the the bet on that is do you believe that um governments and uh politicians and um people in power are going to have an influence on crypto or not if you think they're not going to, I think your argument is stronger. But if you believe that, for example, the SEC is going to be regulating crypto and that crypto will be taxed and that um, there will be major institutional players involved, then the case for Bitcoin as an asset class is much, much stronger. If you see something different happening, I'm open to hear about it. But um, uh, as it stands, uh, I think you're going to see coins like Bitcoin be fully regulated and fully integrated into global finance. And that will be bullish for at least the price. It may not be bullish for the ideals of the white paper, but uh, you'll have Bitcoin built into global settlements, uh, Bitcoin bonds, Bitcoin will become an asset. Um, if you think the world's breaking down and becoming super decentralized and people will start trading on their own and completely ignoring organizations like the Fed or the SEC, that, that could happen and maybe both happen. Uh, I, I'm open-minded that there could be a bifurcation of, of crypto, that there are coins within legacy systems and there are coins in a decentralized world. Um, but um, um, I don't believe it's just Bitcoiners changing the narrative conveniently. I think there's some very smart people talking about this, including Michael Saylor, who I have a lot of respect for. I don't see him as a charlatan. I see him as one of the smartest men in the space. All of the trends are saying Bitcoin has been accepted into legacy markets uh, and it will be a financial asset that is taxed. It's problematic for it as a peer-to-peer -peer coin. So your point about the Satoshi white paper is valid, um, but that doesn't mean that that uh, it's not going to be the winner in the markets anyways. Well, um, my argument would be that the Bitcoin is tremendously successful experiment only thanks to the fact that it was decentralized, that the decentralized, decentralized factor, trustless aspect of it, the first ever internet yeah. coin that, that happened to be trustless. That's what made it in the first place so tremendously uh, successful experiment. It still retains a lot of the, the, the non-sovereign aspect to it. Um, it can't be shut down. It's immutable. It doesn't have someone like Charles Hoskinson uh, making decisions. I saw today that Solana is going to not let it, its whale wallets manipulate the price. So Solana is going into the chain and telling people what to do. That's not decentralized. Wow, I seen that this morning. Okay. Ethereum, Ethereum famously had a, the DAO hack. Uh -huh. and a reverse transaction, coins, yes. And they reversed it. That's never happened with Bitcoin as far as I know. I agree. All right. So with that, I suppose it has to be the end of our today's podcast. Our new structure doesn't let us have more space. <laughs> so what about the next week? What do you, yeah, what do you well, think we're going to talk about? See what happens. I still have my same theme about inflation. I'm really interested in how macroeconomics are impacting crypto. And I think a lot of people aren't talking about that. So I think that's kind of when you and I created this this uh, version of your, your channel, it was to try and connect the two. And let's see what the next week brings. I think we will be way clearer the next Monday, whether we have actually hit some kind of a local bottom or when we haven't. Yeah. So stay with us.